Today, we're going to break down how we can build this effect from Apple's Vision Pro landing page, where images stick to the screen, overlaid text parallaxes over the section, then it all scales down and fades away, revealing the information below. We'll do all of this using React, Tailwind CSS, and Framer Motion. Tailwind, as always, is pretty much optional. All of the CSS is very straightforward. All of the source code for this can also be found on my website in both JavaScript and TypeScript, along with a bunch of other cool animated UI components for React. I don't take sponsors on this channel, just build cool stuff for Hover, so if you're looking to build cool websites yourself, I would massively appreciate if you check that out. Anyways, onto the code. Jumping right in, I've already got a couple of components in here and I have all of my dependencies installed. Really all that we're gonna need for this is Framer Motion. Again, I'm also using Tailwind CSS. So if you wanna follow along with the Tailwind, feel free to add that as well else I'll just make sure that I describe everything that I'm doing. First things first, I just have this div right here with the background of white and then this other component, which is going to make up each of our entire sections. So we're actually gonna have three of these for our example. You can make as many as you want, I guess, but I'm just gonna go ahead and drop those in. So one, two, three sections. Each of our sections is going to need a number of props. So it's going to need the image URL for like kind of that background, like the big hero image thing. It's going to need both a heading and a subheading for the content that's going to parallax through the screen over the image. And then it's going to need children, which is just the prop that gets passed in in between kind of the brackets right here. And that's just gonna be any content that you actually want to render under the image. I'm leaving this just as kind of a children prop instead of, you know, a strict structure so that you can make this whatever you want dependent on the section. Really quick before we actually start laying everything out, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in our props that we actually want to pass in. So I'm just using images that I've gotten from unsplash.com, just like royalty free images. I'm not using videos just because it's a little bit harder to source good videos for this, but you could totally do this with images as well or with videos as well rather but feel free to use whatever you want again i'm just using unsplash images because it's super available for all of you guys so this is my content for the first section and i'm gonna go ahead and grab them for the other two as well and now we've got props passed in for all of these really can say whatever you want and you can use whatever images you want shouldn't make a huge difference scrolling down here a little bit i'm going to come now into our text parallax content component and I'm actually gonna do a slight variation on their version. So their version, the image took the full width of the screen. I'm actually gonna make ours inset a little bit just because I think it's a little bit trendier with kind of these more blocky websites we're seeing often. And I only need one little extra thing to do that. So I'm gonna create a constant up here, which is going to define the amount of padding that we want to have around our image and the sides of the screen. Don't worry if you're not fully following, this will all come together here in just a second. But for mine, I'm just gonna use 12 pixels of padding and then you can adjust this later using this constant. I'm now gonna come inside of our div and there's kind of gonna be two little pieces of content here. So first we're gonna have our actual div, which is going to hold our image. So let's just add it to do. We'll say image and copy text overlay thing. And then below that, we're going to render our children if any are passed in. So that's any of the content that's going to come below the image. So this will be like the image parallax thing and then all of the text that comes after it. We can kind of go step by step with this. So I'm gonna start by just setting up our image. And actually the first thing that we need to do is we need to give some size to this wrapping div right here. So I'm gonna add a class name. I'm gonna give this a position of relative and I'm gonna give this a height of 150 viewport height. Now 150 viewport height is pretty big, but the reason being the image that's gonna live inside of this div is going to be 100 viewport height. And we wanna give that a position of sticky. So it needs some content or some space to actually be able to scroll within the viewport. And this gives us half of the viewport's height to actually be able to scroll that image through the screen where it will actually kind of stick to the page. Saving that, we should now see that we have a bunch of scrollable kind of content over here. And the background is white, again, just because the background of the div up here is white. Now moving on to our actual image component, I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna say, we'll say sticky image. And this is gonna take in one prop called image URL. We're already taking that in up here above. So image URL is equal to image URL. Coming down below our text parallax component here, we'll just say const sticky image. This is going to take in image URL. And for right now, this can just return a div. And inside of that, there's going to be one other div like this. There's actually gonna be two pieces to this. I'm using a div instead of an image just because I think it's a little bit easier and a little bit less edge casey to follow. And I actually want to have kind of a black, it's other little nuance of that original one, but I wanna have a little black overlay that lives over top of my image that fades away as we scroll past. And that's what this is gonna do. So our outer wrapping div right here is going to actually be our image, just using a background image. And this div right here is going to be our overlay. In order to make this outer wrapping div render our image, I'll open up a style 
style tag like this. And I'll just drop in our normal background image stuff. So background image with a URL of image URL. I'll give it a background size of cover and a background position of center. And then we need to actually give this some size here. So I'm going to give it a height of calc 100 viewport height minus whatever our padding is. So up here I've defined our image padding as 12 pixels and I wanna have 12 pixels on both the top and the bottom. So I'm multiplying that by two and then remembering to add the pixels here. And we should now actually be rendering our images. Just now noticing that I'm using an Unsplash Plus image here, so I'm gonna have to remove that. But anyways, we're also going to need to add a top of image padding. And that's not actually gonna do anything yet because we haven't actually added our sticky positioning yet. So I'll add a class name right here. Give this a position of sticky, a Z index of zero, an overflow of hidden, and a rounded of 3XL. Now we should see that our image is kind of set to the top of the screen. And as I scroll, it's going to stick to the page until I get to the next one. That's going to stick to the page. That's going to stick to the page, et cetera, et cetera. Now we don't have our padding on the left and the right side of the screen, so we can fix that really quick. All that we need to do for that is come to this wrapping div on our main component and drop in some styles with padding left and padding right of image padding. And now we should see that our image is inset on all sides like padding from the screen. So as we scroll down, it all fits perfectly into the center with this little padding around the sides. Now I kind of want to jump back and actually render some content under these images just because it's going to make it a little bit easier to kind of follow what's happening with the animation. Remember that the way that we're going to actually render that content is using this children prop right here. So if I wanted to come into any of these and just drop something in, I could do that. So I could just add like a P tag that says something random. And after I scroll down now, I should see that content rendered. Obviously I want something a little better than this. So I've actually prepared a component that we're just gonna reuse for all of these sections for now. If you wanna copy exactly what I've got, feel free or just grab it from the actual source code. I don't think you're really gonna learn a whole lot kind of by building this out. So I don't like to take all the time to actually write all of this kind of markup code. But this is gonna give you something that looks relatively similar to the original version from Apple. One thing I guess I didn't call out is that I'm using font or uh, let's see what it's called again. Yeah, I'm using React icons and I'm using this FI arrow up right icon from that package. So if you want the same one, you can totally add that package. But point being, if we take that content now, so this example content, and then scroll up to our components here, and then just inside of each of these, just actually pass in our content. I'm just gonna use the same one for all three of them. So right there, and right there, and right there. And now after we actually scroll down through our sticky section, we should see our content here. Let's see, let's give it a little bit more space. Yeah, like this. So now we scroll down past this one, and then the next content has kind of the same, same similar blah content. Cool, so now that we actually have our layout set up, let's start by doing the image scaling before we actually get to the kind of text parallax piece. We'll leave that for the last part. And to do that, I'm gonna come back down to our sticky image right here. And actually I lied, I'm gonna scroll back up to the top, close this down, and I need one import from Frame or Motion for now. So I'm going to import motion from Frame or Motion. And I'm gonna turn both of these divs, both this one right here and this one into motion.divs. This is gonna give us access to a couple of things, but the main thing that we want is we wanna be able to pass in motion values specifically for the scale of this component and the opacity of this component. And that's actually going to allow us to listen to the page scroll and scale this image down as we scroll past it and et cetera, et cetera. Now one thing really quick that I actually guess I forgot to do here is to style this inner div. So let's do that really quick so we can kind of see where we're going with this. I'm just gonna add some class names. I'm gonna give this a position of absolute, an inset of zero, and a background of neutral 950 but I'm gonna give that a 70% opacity. And now we should see that the image becomes a little bit darker. And what I wanna happen here is I want the image to kind of fade away, both in opacity of that overlay, as well as scale. Now, the way that we're gonna do this is using a hook from Frame Motion called a use scroll. And the first thing that we need to actually make use scroll work is we need a reference to the element that we want to listen to the scroll position of. So to do that, I'm just gonna use use ref from React. So import use ref, and I'm just gonna call it target ref. And we just can drop that directly on our wrapping motion div so ref is equal to target ref like this and then we want to pass that into use scroll so i'll say const we'll actually get the values here in a second but use oops is equal to use scroll and i imported that from the wrong place use scroll from frame or motion and this hook is going to take a target and that target is going to be this ref so target ref now, essentially what this is going to do by default, it's gonna return us a couple of values. I can actually grab one of those. So the one that we want is called scroll Y progress and use scroll is going to track the position of this target ref 
through the screen, so from the top and the bottom of the viewport, and it's going to return us back a value between zero and one, that's essentially like 0% to 100%, depicting essentially how far that element is through the screen. Now that's a little bit confusing, but we can actually turn this into a useful value so we can see what I'm trying to get at here. And the first value that we want is scale. So I'll say const scale is going to be my new variable here. And we need one more hook from frame or motion that's called use transform. Use transform will take in our scroll y progress like this. And then as the name suggests, all that this hook is gonna do is it's gonna transform one set of values into another set of values. So again, scroll y progress is going to be a value between zero and one. So for our second parameter here, I can pass in, oops, an array like this and say, as this transforms from zero to one, I want to transform that to some other set of values. So as this transform from zero to one, I wanna transform, let's say the scale from one to zero point, let's say eight five. We can actually pass this into our div now. This is only gonna work again, because this is a motion.div. We can actually see what it's gonna do. So I'll just drop that in like this. And we're actually gonna notice a little bit of an issue, right? Because this is already, not doing exactly what we think it's gonna do. It's kind of already scaled down and then it scales up as we scroll. But that's because we actually need to define with use scroll what our offsets are, like essentially what we wanna call zero and what we wanna call one. Because in this case, we're saying zero is kind of all the way at the top of the screen and one's all the way at the bottom. But really what we want is we wanna go from the bottom, kind of like the end of this being sticky. And we want it to start scrolling or start scaling down there. And we want it to scale from that position to this position. So a little bit confusing, but I think when I drop this in, it'll make a little bit more sense. So under my target right here, I wanna pass in one more value called offset. Offset's going to take an array with strings and these strings will actually map to the positions of the element on the screen the way that I'm saying. So what I want is I want end end. And what that's going to mean is I want this to start whenever the end of the element meets with the end of the viewport. And I want that to run until end start, which means I want it to scale up until the end of the element meets with the start of the viewport up here. So let's save that and see what that does for us. Now, as we scroll, it kind of stays full size and it only starts to scale as it gets up to the top of the screen like that. So that looks a little bit closer to what we're actually going for. Of course, it's running a little bit slowly because I'm trying to run five things on my computer, but we can ignore that for now. Now, I also wanna fade away the opacity of this black overlay kind of at the same point as when I'm handling this scale. So all that I need to do that is essentially the same thing as what I'm doing here for scale. So I'm gonna say opacity is equal to use transform, pass in that same variable, from zero to one, and I just wanna map that to an opacity of one to zero. And this is going to go down here on my div right here, give us some space. We'll say style is equal to opacity, just pass that in right there. And now we should see that as we scroll down, it stays dark, and then it starts to kind of lighten up as it goes off the screen. You can see it again with the next one. So scroll lightens as it goes off screen. And that's actually it for the actual image itself. I think now we can move on to the text overlay. So I'm gonna fold up our sticky image right here and I'm gonna create a new component. I'm gonna call that overlay copy. That's going to take in both our heading and our, oops, and our subheading. And that as well for right now can just return a motion.diff. This is going to be rendered directly under our kind of sticky image right here. So right under this, I can actually remove my Comment right here, so just overlay copy, and then remember that we need to pass in our props. So we want both heading and subheading. So we can just go ahead and drop both of those in. And now we can jump back down to that component and start wiring this up. So this is going to end up looking very similar to kind of the same use scroll logic and use transform stuff as we did up here. Let's actually start by just kind of laying it out and then we'll get to the parallax piece here in a second. So to start, let's just render our content. I just want two P tags. The first one is going to have our subheading like this and the second one will have our actual heading. As for styles, we'll say class name. And for our subheading, we want a margin bottom of two, a text of center, a text size of XL. For you non-tailwind people, that's 20 pixels. On medium screens, I want a margin bottom of four. And at medium screens, I want a text of three XL, which for non-tailwind people is 30 pixels. We should see that starting to render down here at the bottom. Might be a little bit hard to see, but we'll fix that here in a second. And just to speed this up a little bit, I'm actually just gonna drop in everything for this heading piece. So text center, text 4XL, that's 36 pixels. 
font bold, and then at medium screens, text of 7XL, which is 72 pixels. Now again, we're gonna notice that this content is kind of down here at the bottom of the screen, but it's getting hidden behind our image right here, which is sticky, so that all makes sense. And to fix that, we just need to make sure that we're positioning this over top of our image. So let's give ourselves some space here. We'll add some class names. I want to position this absolutely. So position absolute, left, zero, a top of zero, display flex giving this a height of screen. Essentially, I'm gonna give this a height of screen so that it fits directly kind of centered with this as it's initially entering the screen, if that makes sense. This will help us to center the text directly in the middle of the image. Give it a width of full, give it a flex column. So flex direction column like this. Give it an items of center to make sure everything gets centered in the middle of the screen as well. So also justify center. And I'm also going to give it a text of white just to make both of these white. Yeah, so there we go. Now everything is rendering over top of our image. And as we scroll past, it should kind of scroll away. Next one should come into view and then scroll past. And this is actually very similar, almost exactly how they have it on the original example. But I wanna add one extra little piece where I want this text to parallax a little bit as well as fade in and out as it comes to the bottom of the screen and out of the top of the screen. Now, the way that we're gonna do that is using the same hooks that we're using up here in our sticky image. In fact, we can just copy and paste these two right here. So I'm gonna grab both our target ref as well as our scroll Y progress. And then we'll just come down to our overlay copy, drop those in like this, and then take our target ref and add it to our wrapping div. So we'll say ref is equal to target ref. Now, the only thing that actually needs to change here is our offsets. I don't want this to animate only as it's kind of down at the bottom because it's already off the screen, right? It's not really what we want. What I want instead is start end and end start. So to explain that before we actually turn this into an animation, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit past this section. And what I'm saying is I want this animation to start when the copy enters the bottom of the screen. So the start of the content meets with the end of the screen. And I want that to run until the end of the content meets with the start of the screen. We can see that in action by just turning this into some actual values. So down here under my use scroll, I'm gonna just drop these in. So we'll start with Y. So this is just going to be a Y transform that we're going to apply to our div. It's gonna give us kind of that faster than page scroll parallaxy type effect. And what I'm saying here is I want to transform our Y progress again from zero to one, but I wanna turn that into a Y transform of 250 pixels to minus 250 pixels. Now we can see what that looks like if we open up our style tag and just drop that in. Now, as we scroll, you should see, it's a little bit hard to see here, but in the next section, we should start to see it our content is scrolling independently of the background image. And that continues to happen until it goes off the top of the screen. And there it is again. To make this a little bit more obvious, I'm now also going to add an opacity animation, also using use transform, passing in scroll Y progress. But I'm actually gonna contain this a little bit more to the center of the screen. So I'm gonna go from 25% to 50%, then to 75%. And I want it to animate from zero opacity up to one opacity or 100% opacity, and then back to zero. So it fades in at the bottom and then fades out at the top. Let's pass in opacity to our style here as well. And starting from the top, as we scroll up, we'll see that this starts to fade away at the top of the screen, then it goes away. The next one starts to fade in at the bottom of the screen until it's centered, at which point it's completely or no longer opaque. And then as it goes back off the top of the screen, it fades away again. Altogether, you'll start with something like this, fades off the top of the screen, scales out of the screen. Next section comes in from the bottom, fades out, et cetera, et cetera. You could stack as many of these sections as you wanted together. This also is all going to be responsive. So if I make this a little bit smaller like this, we're gonna see that all of the text and everything should be a size that makes sense for the screen size. And that is our effect. Again, all of this can be found on my website, but feel free to go and grab this and play around with it and make it your own. Shout out to Apple for the inspiration on this one. Drop any comments below for any other cool effects you would like me to break down. That's the main thing I do on this channel and I could absolutely use the suggestions. Beyond that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.